Hi everyone, welcome to MindFit, brought to you by Home Care Assistance. This is our fourth virtual MindFit class, and uh, today is Thursday, June 25th. So glad that you could join us, and let's get started. If you've joined us for our last three sessions, or perhaps you came to a MindFit class in person before we moved to online sessions, you know that uh, the MindFit program is part of our Balance Care method, and at Home Care Assistance, Balance Care is our holistic approach to healthy aging. One domain is cognitive stimulation, and MindFit is part of that, or one way to challenge your mind. Um, there's lots of other ways to do that. If you are enjoying MindFit and you're looking for ways to do this outside of our classes, I encourage you to call your local home care assistance agency and talk about um, some options where you could do this type of exercises and connection with a one-on-one -on -one, um, companion to support that. So um, again, we're going to dive into cognitive stimulation today with our uh, MindFit program. So we have four exercises for you today, Alphabet Soup, Quiz 100, What's That Saying, and Letter Swap. And we also have our Talk About It flags that you might see over here. Um, and they help us to go a little bit more in depth um, if you're doing this with a partner or a companion, um, there's uh, some ideas of how you might dive a little deeper into the topics that we're talking about today. Our first exercise is alphabet soup. And in this exercise, we're trying to identify an answer or a word that's connected with um, the topic that starts with each letter of the alphabet. And our topic for today is words related to government. So our category today is words related to government. And I'll get us started with a couple of ideas and then I'll give you a little bit of time to come up with some on your own. So how about for A, um, we could start with administration or B, think of something that a lawmaker may pass. Something that a lawmaker may pass. And this one, we're thinking of a bill. Um, we could uh, skip down to see how about C. Um, our government is set up where we have House of Representatives and Senate, and they make up what, uh, what aspect of our government. I'm thinking of Congress. Okay, maybe we'll skip ahead to some of the harder letters. How about um, V? Does anyone have one for V? This is something that has been in the news a lot lately because there um, have been concerns about um, this process and whether it's going to run smoothly. This is something that um, we do uh, annually, and um, we all have an opportunity to put in our vote. Okay, so if you want to pause here and take some more time, go ahead. Um, I'm going to move us forward in the interest of our time together and put up uh, some options for answers. You might have come up with something different. So here's a whole list of answers. Looks like they were a little stuck for X. I guess they're, the Xerox is um, making copies of all the legislation that they have to get out to everyone. 
All right, so we're going to move on to quiz 100, and we've been doing this each week. Um, it's a, a good opportunity to get us thinking about different topics, and um, I think we've got five questions this week. So an example would be name something you might lose. Um, name something you might lose, and a possible answer for that could be um, you might lose your keys. What else might you lose? Um, if you're trying to make a guess about whether or not something is going to happen, you might place this or you might um, share this with a group of friends and all um, do this. I'm thinking of a bet. You might lose a bet. All right, so let's move on to the exercise. Okay, our first question is name something you open. Name something you open every day. Think about when you go through your daily routine, what do you have to open? Um, and this could be uh, something that you physically open, um, or it could be uh, something um, that you do without even thinking. Um, and I, I don't want to give too much of the answers away. So something that you open every day, and we're going to move on to the answers. Okay, our answers they came up with are a door. We all do that every day. Our mouth, our eyes, you might open mail. And hopefully we're opening our minds every day. Hopefully this uh, class is opening your mind a little bit. Okay, next question. Name a hobby or sport that begins with the letter B. A hobby or sport that begins with the letter B. And they're giving you a clue on the screen. Um, so we can come up with at least one answer for this one. And that is, of course, the ballet. Um, so there, one clue is the ballet, or one answer rather. Um, another uh, option, can anyone think of maybe a sport? There's a couple of sports. How about um, something you do on a court and you're trying to get a ball through the net? That one is basketball. How about something that's a hobby you might do this in your kitchen? And I've been hearing that a lot of people are taking this up during our um, time of staying at home um, and not going out as much. This is a hobby that a lot of people might be taking up right now. And uh, they've had flour shortages because so many people are doing this, flour and yeast shortages. What is this that's, uh, that people are all attempting? Um, if you said baking on that last one, that's what we were thinking about. So bowling, baking, ballet, boating, and bird watching. You could also say basketball or baseball for a sport. And there's a talk about it question over here. Let me see if I can get my, there we go. Um, talk about it. What are your hobbies? They don't have to start with the letter B. Um, and do you have any past hobbies that you'd like to get into again? Sometimes our hobbies go by the wayside in life and uh, it would be fun to, to break them out again. Um, so think about that one. All right, next question. Name a movie set in New York City. Name a movie set in New York City. There's probably a lot more than the five that are on our list. So I'm curious what people come up with. Um, one of the movies, the title has to do with a meal of the day. The title has to do with a meal of the day. So I'll let you think about that for a minute. Meal of the day and a woman's name. 
All right, we're gonna go to the answers. We've got Merrick on 34th Street. Our clue was about breakfast at Tiffany's. Rosemary's Baby, The Godfather, and West Side Story are all set in New York City. The next question is, name something you sit on besides a chair. And I'm sitting on a chair right now, but I could also be sitting on what? Something you might sit on, especially if you're maybe at a counter instead of a table. Starts with an S. I'm thinking of a stool. What's something else that you might sit on besides a chair? So far we've got a stool. What else might you sit on? How about something you might sit on if you are in a place of worship? They often have these. Or if you're waiting for the bus. That answer starts with a B if you haven't gotten it yet. That one uh, might be a bench. So we've got two answers so far, stool and bench. I'll give you a moment to see if you can think of any more. We've got five on our list for this one. And here are the answers. We had bench, Sofa, swing, stool, or just the plain old floor. All right, our next question is, name something parents tell their children not to waste. Something parents tell their children not to waste. And this could be something that's a household resource, um, something that you use um, daily. Think of a few things parents might say, don't waste this. And our answers are water, electricity, food, money, or time, don't waste your time. And there's a, let's see if I can get this right. I talk about it off to the side. What were some ways that your family conserved resources growing up? What were some ways that your family uh, conserved resources growing up? And this might especially have come into play if you were growing up during um, World War II or a time of economic downturn, where a lot of families were pulling together and uh, trying to either support the war efforts or um, just conserve resources. All right, so we're on to our next exercise. This is called, What's That Saying? And we're gonna review the picture clues that are on the screen to come up with an idiom or a common expression. For example, I'm gonna give you a clue on this one. It starts with, it's a blank, blank. It's a blank, blank. And the picture clue is on the screen there. If you said, it's a small world, that's what we were looking for. All right, here's our next one. We've got a picture of someone taking a stroll on the left. And on the right, we've got a picture of a, looks like a certain type of bird. Can anyone come up with what that bird is? It's a clue. I believe that's supposed to be a blue jay. So we've got someone taking a stroll in a park and a blue jay. And the phrase that they're looking for um, has to do with if you, know, you might get a ticket for this actually in some cities. Um, I lived in Boston for a short while and I believe they gave tickets for this. This would be if you're crossing and you're not doing it at the right designated area, if you're crossing the street. If you guessed jaywalking, you are correct. Okay, our next one, we've got three pictures this time. Um, the first one is a scale. 
there's a outline of someone's head and a crown. So a scale, a head, and a crown. And the clue for this one is the scale does not have to do with the word scale. It has to do with more what it's measuring. If you set something on there, what, um, what is that measuring or comparing? So the first word in this uh, phrase, if you're still working on it, is heavy. This phrase starts with heavy. And I'll put up the answer for you. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Next question. Okay, we've got a bag of chips, looks like, and an x-ray of someone's shoulder. So if we put these two together, there's an idiom. You might use this if uh, someone uh, thinks highly of themselves or uh, feels that they have something to prove. This one is, you've got a chip on your shoulder. You chip on your shoulder. Okay, next one. Here we've got what looks to be a road coming through this green. And there's a picture of someone's torso um, with a certain organ highlighted. And looks like they're highlighting the stomach area for your intestines. And at the end of the road is a heart. So we've got a road or a path that someone might travel, a stomach and a heart. And those are our three clues for this one. Take a moment, you might wanna pause if you're coming up with the answer. This phrase starts with the way to, and here's the answer. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, or it could be woman. Um, my husband does the cooking in our household, so uh, we have to switch this phrase around um, for, for our house. And there's a talk about question over here. Um, talk about it. Have you found this to be true, that the way to someone's heart is through their stomach? And when you cook, if you're trying to win over someone's heart, do you follow a recipe or do you just wing it? So a couple questions about cooking on this one. Okay, next question or next um, clues rather. So we've got a dollar sign, an arm, and uh, someone's leg. A dollar sign, an arm, and someone's leg. This is something someone might say if things are, uh, item is very expensive, something that you're purchasing is very expensive, you might say it's going to cost a blank and a blank. I probably gave it away there. All right, and here's the answer. That will cost an arm and a leg. Okay, this one we've got um, a blow dryer for your hair and a picture of a man who is running. And this is a phrase you might use if you're, um, you're doing a rehearsal of something. You're trying it out before the actual event. I might say, I'm going to do a blank blank. And the answer is a dry run. Going to do a dry run. Okay. All right, this one has something to do with the size of the pictures. 
this is a phrase that my parents would often say to me when we were together at our um, family holiday get-togethers and there was a, 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 a big smorgasbord of food available and they would always remind me of this so that I didn't take too much on my plate. It has something to do with the size of the pictures. And there's that picture of the stomach again. And our answer is, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Okay, hey, next one, we've got two beautiful birds here and a picture of a rock. Um, or another word for a rock would be what that starts with an S and that'll probably give away some of the answer. Another word for a rock that starts with an S might be a stone and then we've got a picture of two different types of birds so this is something if you're taking care of uh, multiple things at one time you might say to kill two birds with one stone okay this is our challenge for today because they've given us five pictures to work through um, that first symbol is like a no symbol or you can't or don't and there's a woman who's at a chalkboard with a student it looks like so you want to think about what her profession might be I'm guessing she's a teacher we've got a cake with a bunch of candles on it a very attractive looking golden retriever and it looks like a group of kids who are trick-or-treating so see if you can put all of that together and I'll give you the start for this one is you can't that's what that symbol is meaning One other clue is if you had that many candles on your birthday cake, you might be feeling what? So I'll give you the answer on this one. It is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So they took a little bit of everything from these pictures. Our next exercise is letter swap. And in this exercise, you're going to change the first or last letter of the following words to get a new word. For example, the first letter of a word meaning very warm to a negative adverb. So you can try thinking of the word that means very warm first. This is a word that starts with the letter H. And that word is hot. So if we were to change that first letter, what is a negative adverb that we could come up with? The answer would be not. All right, so that's how letter swap, walk, letter swap works. The tongue twister. Let's move on to the first exercise. Our questions for letter swap, we're swapping out the first letter here. A man's title to a female relative. A man's title to a female relative. And the first word, a man's title, starts with the letter M in this one. Letter M. You would call a female Mrs. and the male would be called a Mr. So if we swap out that first letter, we would get a female relative maybe a sister. All right, a body part to international conflict. This body part has three letters and it's part of your head. Starts with the letter E. 
So the first word on this one is ear. And if we swap out the E to create a word um, that means international conflict, we've got war. All right, next one, a motor vehicle to something that's in the distance. This is another three letter word. What um, do you drive around in? Starts with a C. This would be your car. And if we swap out that C, what word means something that's far out in the distance? Oh, I just give it away. <laughs> that one would be far. A respectful title to atmosphere. And this is a title used typically for a man. Another three letter word starts with an S. A respectful title for a man. That one would be sir. And if we swap out that S, something that is associated with, related to atmosphere would be air. All right, our next set of questions is another letter swap, but we're swapping the last letter on these. So a little bit different. Fast reading to a short play. If you're reading something very fast and you may only be getting certain parts, um, you might not be getting the whole um, information because you're going so fast. These words both start with the letter S. So we're changing the last letter here. Fast reading, this would be to skim. And if you change out that last letter of skim, you get what? This would be a skit. All right, a person who lacks judgment and something to eat. Person who lacks judgment and something to eat. These both start with the letter F. I'll give you a little bit of time to think about them. Person who lacks judgment. And something to eat. You might start with something to eat on this one. You can go the other way as well. So in general, what we eat is called food. We're going to swap out that last letter. Maybe that'll help you if you're having trouble on the first word. That first word is a fool. Okay, next question. A mountaintop to a fruit. We're swapping out the last letter to change a word that means a mountaintop to a fruit. And these words both start with the letter P. The very top of the mountain, you would say, I've reached the blank. Peak. And how about a food or a fruit, rather? It starts with P E A. This one is a pear. And lastly, a female horse to a mark or blemish female horse to a mark or blemish. And I think, I think they may have given us the answer on this one. We're changing mare to mark. So this one I believe should be Spot or blemish. They gave us a little hint on that one. That was nice of them. All right. So that is our program for today. I hope you got a good uh, workout of the brain. You came up with a few of the answers. Again, uh, no one ever gets all of them. Um, but usually we do this in a group setting. So everybody comes up with a few answers. Um, I hope that you're finding someone else that you can uh, share this program with. Um, we always end with another tip or resource from one of our other domains in the Balanced Care Method, and today we're focusing on nutrition. 
So uh, we talk about um, brain health in the MindFit program. And one thing that's really interesting is our brain has about 100 billion neurons and is over 75% water. Um, so in order to keep all of those fine-tuned um, parts of the brain working at optimal capacity, um, we want to make sure that the, the food and the fuel that we're putting in our body is supporting the, the functions and the um, intricate workings of our brain. So there's a resource here. Um, if you go to Home Care Assistance to our blog, and you look up nutrition and um, brain health, there's a, a full link to the blog post. You'll get lots of great tips about um, different types of uh, diets that you can follow, but even more importantly, um, just general uh, approach to healthy eating and different types of foods that you wanna make sure you include in your diet, like whole grains, fruits and vegetables, nuts, beans, and healthy fats. So check out the blog to get a little more information. And our talk about question is, what foods do you already eat that are brain superfoods? So you can look at that the list on this blog post and see many of us are already doing these things. Um, you might think of a few or learn about a few that you can add in. And have you ever tried a brain healthy smoothie? So a lot of times we can pack a big punch into a smoothie and that's a great way to get a lot of your um, fruits and vegetables um, to start off your day. So uh, one resource to check out and we'll wrap up with a link to our additional enrichment resources. So if you're looking for things to do while we're a little bit more homebound these days, check out our enrichment guide. Um, there's more cognitive stimulation exercises. There's also some links to physical exercise um, programs. And if you're uh, helping to care for or support someone um, during this time, check out our HCA self-care guide, and that has a lot of great tips as well. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me um, at my email address that's listed there or reach out to your local home care assistance office. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you in two weeks.